In this lesson, we will use the DIG utility to assess organizational security. We are in the DIG portion of the video series. This lesson is part of a video series that prepares you for the hands-on portion of the CompTIA Security Plus exam and is designed to give you hands-on experience with the operations and incident response section of the exam. So what is DIG? The DIG command in Linux is a network administration tool used by querying DNS domain name system servers to retrieve information about domain names such as IP addresses, mail exchange records, and name servers. The DIG command is used by system administrators, network engineers, and anyone needing to perform DNS related tasks on a Linux or Unix based system. The DIG command can be used at any time when there is a need to retrieve DNS information, whether for troubleshooting networking issues setting up DNS configurations, or performing routine maintenance. The DIG command is a command line tool available on Linux and Unix-based operating systems. It can be used in a terminal or command prompt window. The DIG command is used to perform DNS lookups, allowing users to gather crucial information about domain names, helping with such tasks as troubleshooting networking problems, configuring DNS servers, and verifying DNS configurations. To use the dig command, open a terminal and command prompt window and type dig followed by the domain name or query type you want to perform. The rest of the how is what this video is all about, so let's get into it. To get started, grab the companion guide from the link in the show notes below. Also, if you like this content, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any new videos. Okay, so let's get started. As we said, we have our companion guide on the side. It says, go ahead and launch a terminal session in Linux. I'm going to the menu screen here and just start one up. And I have a terminal emulator. I'm going to double click it to just make it bigger here. I'm going to do control plus. So that way our screen is a little bit bigger. And we have our terminal prompt. So we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping here on this side. So we're looking good here. And it says the first thing we need to do is just dig and see what the command looks like. So I'm going to dig and I'm going to do Facebook and see what we get here. And we see some options here. We see dig gives us a little bit of information. We'll observe the output in a moment, but we see, okay, great. So dig gives us the header, gives us the Facebook. It also gave us the IP address and that's exactly what DNS does. It's like a big address book. It converts human readable names into IP addresses. So if I want to know what the IP address for Facebook is, it's an A record means that it's an IPv4. It's going to give me the IPv4 IP address at 31.13.71.36. We can also use the short command. In other words, if we want just the IP address, we can just type dig plus short plus Facebook and what we get here is we just get the IP address. So if we just want to convert, let's just say the facebook.com to the IP address and we just want to get right to it, you can throw the plus short option or tick or tack or flag and you get 31.13.71.36. Let's take a look what the trace will do. The trace will give us basically a, a short trace route. So I'm going to go ahead and change that in a little bit and see what the trace does. But obviously you have to put a plus in front of it because it's adding that flag and it gives you a full trace of the route that it took to get this IP address of Facebook. Once again, this is good for troubleshooting. Not a lot to discover at this point here because we're keeping it light and breezy, but you know you do have that option if you need to. So let's go ahead and uh, clear the screen to get it back on top. We're going to go ahead and do some housekeeping by selecting these options here. And now, you know that we have these specific address books or DNS servers. And in this case here, I'm using my local DNS, which has a copy of the global address book, if you will, close to me. But I can use some publicly available DNS servers. For example, in this case here, we can use DNS's, uh, Google's DNS server to take a look at Facebook from D Google's perspective. So if I do DN dig Facebook, I take that and I'm going to say at 8.8.8.8. Now that's one of the globally available DNS servers. And at this point here, you see that I have my options here. I do have Facebook. I do get the IP address, but it says the server that gave me this information was 8.8.8. .8 .8 
and it's also on port 53 which is UDP DNS so that's great we can do the same thing again with quad one so I'm gonna clear my screen and you'll see the change actually let's leave the 8 there so you can see what the difference looks like and we're gonna go to uh, Cloudflare's DNS server and you see on the top part here we have 8.8 .8, but down here we're using Cloudflare's DNS server once again this is not an issue in terms of getting the accurate information we still have 31.13.71.36 in both instances but sometimes when you're switching domains you want to know if you are fully propagated throughout the internet you can start querying different DNS servers to see what IP address they have listed for you so this is helpful if you're doing let's say a website migration or if you're planning some type of reconnaissance you can go ahead and use a different type of options here okay so we'll do our housekeeping I'm gonna come back on the Kali Linux side I'm going to clear and then I'm just going to go ahead and just do a regular Facebook again so that way we can take a look at the options here so in the options, we see we have the server. We saw that already. So I'm querying the Cloudflare DNS server. It's a publicly available DNS server. We also have the non-authoritative server, which is basically telling us that it doesn't have the exact data. In other words, in order to get the Facebook, we would have to Facebook, we'd have to go to Facebook's DNS server to get that IP address. When we go to other publicly available DNS servers, it's a copy, and that's fine. And then of course we get the addresses, which is what we're looking for. So I'll go ahead and just quickly select the output here as our housekeeping. And now we wanna do specific record types. So I'm going to clear the screen. Of course you have to type it properly. And now I'm going to dig Facebook and then at this point here, we're just going to do a MX record, which is a mail exchange record. So in the mail exchange record, I'm looking for the Facebook's mail server that's going to handle mail. And I see that IP address right here. And this is the priority level. In a previous uh, class, we saw this using the MX toolbox, or you can use NS lookup to see the same information. Dig is considered a little bit more modern. So same thing here, if I wanna take a look, we saw this here with the A record. This is the IP address for Facebook. If we wanna see the quad six, or I should say the IPv6, we're just gonna do quad A, and then we get the IPv6 address. So this is what Facebook's IPv6 address looks like. And now because I didn't specify the DNS server, I'm using my local DNS server to get a copy of DNS records. And once again, we could specify or co uh, combine these. I'll go ahead and clear again. And this one here, let's take a look what a text record looks like. Now I'm purposely being non-case sensitive. Sometimes I'm lowercase and uppercase. It tends to be forgiving this way, but generally speaking, you want to have these flags in uppercase. But at any rate, here we are at Facebook and we see some text records. This is the send a policy framework. It's redirecting to a different domain so that way they can consolidate their efforts. And this is the typical information that we would see on a typical DNS server, which is just regular text information that's going to give us a little bit more information. In this case, these are the Google site verification codes that servers can use to make sure that Google is indeed Google, or in this case here, Facebook can do those verifications here as well. Okay, one more, we can do a name server. So I'm going to clear here and let's go ahead and do a name server. So Facebook, we wanna know exactly what the name server is. So we do the name server and this is Facebook's name service. This is where Facebook is actually putting in those records. So on their A server, the a.nameserver.facebook, they're putting their human readable name and the IP address. The other servers we were seeing like Google's 8.8.8 .8 or Cloudflare's 1.1.1 is getting a copy from here and it takes a time for it to propagate throughout the internet. But this is how we would find Facebook's name server by doing a dig facebook.ns. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, do some housekeeping and let's do some reverse. Let's just say you have an IP address and you want to know the name server or the human readable version of it. You can do a dig minus X because you don't know what it is and you do 8.8.8 .8 .8 .8 
and then you get the human readable name. So 8.8.8, .8 .8, the human readable name is dns.google. Let's see what that looks like. I'll go over here on this side. I'm going to do dns.google. Okay, excellent. And this is Google's DNS server. Excellent. And now let's just see if I want to get a domain name for this here. If I want to do Facebook, I get the same information we were looking for. In this case here is just a regular A record and I get that 31.13.76. So this is how we would do a reverse if we wanted to or needed to. We can do a dig minus the IP address and it gives us the human readable. Let's do that again for another publicly available DNS server is 9.9 .9 quad nine and quad nine is going to tell us DNS nine dot quad nine dot net. So great. You can convert IP addresses to the human readable versions by doing a minus X command. And then last but not least, we saw this in a previous exercise, but it's worth mentioning that MX toolbox does this in a graphical user interface. So if we want to take a look at an MX record, for example, we can go to Facebook, we do an MX lookup, and sure enough, it gives us the information that we're looking for. This is the MX record for Facebook. So I'll clear this here on the Kali Linux side and just do that again. So it's dig Facebook, I throw in the MX flag, and sure enough, we have the 10.smtpn VVVV Facebook, and here it is, SMTP in VVV Facebook.com. Excellent. What else can we do? We can go and take a look here. We can do and look at the IPv6. So I do the MX lookup. I look here. I'll go slide down a little bit here and look for quad A's. This is the IP address. We saw that already, so we can just up arrow. In this case here, I'll just do a history if you're new to this. And in history, we know that we did that with the line 26. So I can do exclamation point 26 and actually run that command. And here we are, we have the IPv6 on this side here. We also have it here on this side. So this is looking pretty good. And then last but not least, we can do a text command right from the MX toolbox. So in MX toolbox, you can look at the option set here. You do a text lookup and you get the same information that we've had before. I'm going to clear the screen so you can see it on the command line side. We do a history, we have the text. So 28 was the option that we're looking for. I do exclamation point 28. I run that line, Facebook TXT, and I have the same Google site verification information that you see here. So quick and dirty, you can always learn more about the dig command by using the man dig, the manual command. So let's clear this out, see what that looks like. So man dig, and you get the manual for the dig utility. It's a DNS lookup utility, very similar to NS lookup. And this rounds out our DNS feature here in terms of the tool set that you may need for either the CompTIA Security Plus exam or just for your general knowledge. So feel free to explore with this here and I'm happy you were able to stop by. We'll see you at the next lesson.